Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our final conversation this morning is uh, about telecommunication workers who are threatening a three-day warning strike over unfair working practices and, uh, of course, uh, asking that the government uh, immediately takes uh, uh, steps in order to, uh, you know, fix some of these challenges. Uh, we are speaking this morning with uh, Mr. Okonu Abdullahi, the General Secretary of uh, Texan. Good morning, Mr. Abdullahi. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning to you. I'm glad to be here. Great to have you. Let's, you know, understand better what the challenges are with the working conditions. Um, you know, the telecom, your group, and of course, uh, workers on the, uh, your body are complaining about. Okay, thank you so much uh, for having me once again. I, it is quite unfortunate that the uh, telecommunications sector, which happens to be the not only the uh, fastest growing uh, sector in Nigeria, even as a matter of fact, all over the world, and the only sector in uh, all over the world that is not negatively affected by the coronavirus uh, uh, lockdown and its uh, fallouts. Uh, you, you realize that while other sectors are suffering uh, enormously as a result of uh, the COVID-19, telecommunication sector rather than to be suffering is booming by the day. So as a result of uh, this, unfortunately rather, apologies, unfortunately, despite the fact that the, the sector is booming, is doing very well, you we realize that the employers of labor, they are not they do not appreciate the workers that are laying the golden egg, if you permit me to say. So there are a lot of challenges in the sector the employees are facing. It, it ranges from, uh, first and foremost, a breach of uh, freedom of association and their rights to organize. A lot of workers, because of the precarious conditions they find themselves, they, we, they wish to join the union. And as a matter of fact, a lot of them have decided to, to join the union. But the, the greatest challenge is the, the resistance from the employers of labor. So anytime you get to meet with some of them and the right to them to inform them about the intent and the willingness and the readiness of the workers to belong to the union, rather than the, as expected, give you the attention to the union and the commence uh, the necessary process of uh, uh, finalizing the uh, organizing uh, procedures of uh, for uh, of, uh, of the workers to belong to the union. Rather than doing that, they, they go as far as uh, even threatening, intimidating, and uh, in some instances, they even sack some of the leaders of these workers in the, uh, working in the organizations. So apart from this also, you see that there are a, lot, a lot of casualization is going on in the sector, whereby somebody is giving, at times, uh, one month uh, contracts of employment. And this one month contract, in many instances, it will only be renewed maybe once or twice. Thereafter, it's no, there's nothing like a renewal. And this person or these people, this category of people, they would have got several years of uh, uh, their times in the, in the sector. Five years, ten years, and, uh, and above, and the likes like that. And in some instances, too, you see when they give it two months or three months, the max are more, more often is one year. So, and uh, they hide under what they refer to as a outsourcing. And I think uh, it is even high time for, uh, for the lawmakers to look into our laws and tinker with, with them. The, cur the current practice of outsourcing and the subcontracting, as they call it, in the sector is a no-no. It doesn't favor the workers. You can imagine a situation by you now have uh, several, several uh, levels of employment in the, in the sector. It gets to a stage that even some workers, they don't even know who their real employers are. A vendor, for example, takes a project from the operators. I've been taking a project which uh, the sec I mean, sorry, the operators have uh, outsourced to the vendor. The vendor in turn now provide another layer of employment by inviting, uh, uh, what, do you, what do they call it now, subcontractors. These subcontractors in turn also now outsource again to another set of people which they refer to as uh, outsourcing outsource, outsource companies. And this, and uh, 
the, the sad thing again is that directives come from all of them at the, at the same time, even including the operators. And you see a situation whereby, like I earlier mentioned, workers are intimidated. There are there are a category of uh, there is a category of uh, workers, the field engineers, for example. They don't have any work hour. 24 hours they are expected to be on their toes. Their phone must be by their side. They can be caught at any point in time, and they must never give any excuse whatsoever. In this situation in Nigeria today, where the insecurity is of high, is of a, a, it's very high in this country, they will call them in the wee hour of the night to go and work without provision for security. And they, as a result of this, a lot of them have been attacked. When they are attacked, anything that befalls them, the employers, they exonerate themselves, they excuse themselves, they don't take responsibility of the attack. A lot of them were, have been hospitalized. The meager salary they take home is the one they use in getting care, uh, taking care of themselves. And uh, we are saying this should be, there should be a stop to this. Okay. Then apart from that. All right, go are, ahead. Okay, please go on. I was going to ask you, uh, we've heard all the grievances that telecommunication workers have against the employers. You're not allowed to form unions. You're, you know, exposed to, you know, very harsh working conditions. But I wanted to ask, you know, these things that you go through, is there any of them that is not covered in your employment contract with these companies? Apologies, I'm not sure I got the question right. I'm asking you if, you know, these things you've mentioning, the challenges you're having currently, if they're not covered in your employment contract. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. If you could remember vividly, I started by saying, by citing instances of uh, a case whereby uh, the employers engage in the casualization of the workers. That means somebody that is giving a one month uh, contract of employment and there is no renewal. It means that every other, what do you call it, um, uh, benefit that is supposed to be entitled to is taken care of. I mean, it's taken, it's taken off the table outrightly for, for mm -hmm. such a person. It, what that means also is that this person, there is no security of job for this person. This person can leave his home today, get to the office, and they are, they, the person is told, yeah, your service is no longer needed. And that, that is bye bye because there's no concrete, there's no comprehensive contract of employment with uh, this category of uh, workers in the sector. So, so how about payment? How about the payment of the salaries? Is, is, it, is it meager? Is it above minimum wage? And does it come as a when due? Yeah, to a very large extent, yes, it's above uh, minimum wage. But to equate, a minimum wage, minimum wage is not even what we should even be talking about in this circumstance. Because in the first place, those that, uh, those, uh, the minimum wage itself is what cannot take anybody home. It's supposed to be a, a living wage, but it's a suffering wage, like a lot of people like to say. So these people find they have more than minimum wage, but when you equate their qualification one and the quantum of the jo of jobs they do, you will realize that what they are being given is nothing to write to me about. Like I said again, they, in about three weeks ago, I stumbled upon a statistics which depicts the highest revenue earning organizations in Nigeria. I tell you, top number one of them is a telecommunication organization. This to show you, not even oil sector, no oil company in the in the in the ranking. This to show you how much is being raked in every day, every, every time by these employers in the sector. So what the, what the income is, is not commensurate with the effort or the work these workers do in the what, sector. Uh, so to, Mr. Abdullahi. To answer your question, what the workers are earning in the telecommunication sector is very mega. It is mega, yes. What is, what is the average you know, salary for some of these workers that you've mentioned? Hey, thank you so much. It depends on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the subsector these workers uh, belong to. You know, you have uh, some that are customer service. You have some 
that uh, I, we call them ISP, Internet Service Providers. We have some that uh, the operators, you understand? Then we have some that are vendors, you understand? So the salary scale differ depending on the subsector you find yourself. But when you look at this, the least paid in all this sector, the ISPs and the customer service uh, employees are the least paid in the sector. Can you give us a figure, you know, um, of what it looks like? I tell you, there are some of them that uh, earn as low as uh, 30,000, 35,000 uh, monthly, yes. And, you know, this comes without allowances? Yes, it comes without allowances. It comes without allowances. Okay. Um, do you think that these private telecom uh, companies have taken advantage of uh, the uh, lack of implementation of Nigeria's labor laws? Um, and um, have your complaints be put to the Ministry of Labor and some of uh, you know these uh, organizations that should uh, you know stand um, and represent uh, uh, telecom workers? Okay, thank you so much. Yes, it is obvious that these people are taking advantage of our labor laws, the, the loopholes in the labor laws. And I'm seizing this opportunity to reiterate again that the government needs to work on our labor laws. The labor law as it is today is not to the favor of the workers. It is to the favors of the employers. Mm -hmm. Having said this, having said this, I will want to say again that a lot of, if you go through our press statements, we give some specific instances where we buy, we have challenges with some of these employers. Having had some challenges with them, we followed what the law says we should do in terms of uh, when you look at uh, what do you call it now? Trade dispute act. The first point of call is for you to declare a trade dispute. Once you declare a trade dispute, the next thing you do is to go for a conciliation at the Ministry of Labor. You see a situation whereby, having gone to the ministry, the ministry gives its verdict at conciliation. In order for these employers to abide by the, uh, the verdict of the conciliation, they went against it and did what's, what suits them. I'll give you an instance. In the case of Nokia, for example, whereby one of the executives of the, of the union was placed on redundancy, we escalated this issue to the Ministry of Labor. The Ministry of Labor <clears throat> was convinced that, yes, we were able to establish a case of victimization against this empl uh, employee. Apart from that also, the Ministry of Labor also posited that, yes, any union executive must be the last to go. Such a person cannot be sacked under no circumstance, except if, for instance, it is a criminal case, it's a criminal issue. Yes, apart from that also, if the company is folding up or as a, a, a case of gross incompetence, and they, they made this clear to them, and they were informed to retain this employee, that at worst, the least they can do is to transfer him to another department. Immediately, we got back. The next, about two days afterwards, what did we see? The employer gave the severance the employment of this worker. Apart from this also, the Ministry of Labor also gave a verdict that as a result of the acquisition of Akata Lucent by Nokia, that these former Akata Lucent employees should be paid. Even as a matter of fact, it will interest you to know that the condition of service of former Akata Lucent employees states that as a in case of major acquisition or outsourcing, each of the employees should be paid one month per year of service. I tell you, the Ministry of Labor gave verdict also in our favor on this uh, on this issue. What did the what did the management do? They wrote to us to inform us that they will not abide by that uh, uh, verdict of the Ministry of Labor. What was the reason they gave? They said according to their global offices, where, where, where they find themselves, every country all over the world, that where they have offices, they never paid to any of the uh, Aka, uh, former Akatel Center employees. And we are saying, are these people telling us that they are bigger, they are greater than our nation? Are they saying that they are bigger than uh, our government, they are bigger than our institutions? We are saying no, no to this. I'll give another instance. In the case of uh, Huawei Technologies Nigeria Limited, we tried as much as possible to establish a branch in that organization. Several times we tried, several times they built a brick, a brick wall. 
we escalated these issues not only to the Ministry of Labor, not only also we escalated to the level of the uh, Minister of Communications. Com Minister himself intervened in this matter. Still, Huawei Technologies is not ready to respect the our laws and our government. Then apart from that, also they went as far as even sacking some of these workers at the at the intimidation by the Ministry of Labor. Yeah, we discussed all these issues. The ministry had directed that the SAC employees should be reabsorbed. And as a matter of fact, to be fair to the deputy managing director of the, of the company, he said it was shocking to him that those employees were sacked. That as a matter of fact, rather than being losing, I mean, sacking employees, what they planned doing was to employ more workers that he will see to it himself. And three weeks after, four weeks after, after this uh, mediation, nothing has happened. And we are saying all these multinationals cannot continue to enslave us in our country. Okay. No. So, Mr. Abdullahi, um, we hear you. And now the Texan is saying that they're going to embark on a strike. What's the plan for that? Thank you so much. Uh, you, we, we have the, in our uh, press statement, we have made it known to the world that we should be embarking on strike. What it simply means is that uh, our workers, I mean, our, our workers in the sector will be called upon to down to, to stop work for the period of those three days at the first instance. After that three days, and we see nothing change, either by whatever, once we realize that there is no change, we'll give a timeline. We'll, the, the relevant organs of the union will sit down again, review the activities and, uh, and take a necessary action. But in the first instance, the three-day warning strike is such that workers in the sector are not expected to work from tomorrow, which is 16th uh, June 2021. And, um, you know, let's also be clear on what exactly your demands are. Um, so if there and if these demands are not met, then of course you take the further action, like you've mentioned. What exactly okay. are your demands? Okay, thank you so much. We've made a lot of demands in the in our press statement. One of which is that first and foremost, according to all relevant laws, including ILO conventions, the freedom of association of workers must be respected, must be obeyed by all these employers. And we are going ahead to say. Because a lot of them, when you, you meet with them, they will tell you that, yes, they recognize the union. Because the trade unions had, had said, has compelled them that they should give recognition to unions. We are saying that they should go beyond word of mouth. They should put it into writing, circulate to all the employees, informing them that under no circumstance must they be victimized, intimidated, or even assaulted as a result of their membership of the union. This demand must be met. All of them they should, as a matter of urgency, write to all their employees because all these employees, once they have it, they will get in touch with us to tell us that, yes, they have been able to do this. Then apart from that also, we are also demanding that the sack of all the workers that have been sacked over this period, we, we had contentions with, with some of them, they must be restated. Our officer in Nokia that has been sacked should be recorded should be recorded, fought with immediately without a, a, a wasting of time. Also in Huawei Technologies Nigeria Limited, two of our field engineers that have been sacked must be recorded immediately. And as a matter of fact, they should call us for a meeting and for us to start the procedural agreement and uh, CBA negotiation for our members. So this is another demand that we are, we are putting forward. Then apart from this also, we are saying, that those of them that have been given one form of a query, warning, and a lot of intimidations, the what letters that have been given them, in for, either in form of a query or warning, should be should be withdrawn immediately. So these are some of the uh, what do you call it? These are some of the 
uh, some of our demands. I have about uh, 10 of them that I pencil down. Okay. Uh, I don't know there is more time I can go on and uh, take uh, others. All right, Mr. Abdullahi, um, your, your points have been well noted. Um, your warning strike begins tomorrow till Thursday uh, of, of June 2021. Three days, actually. Yes, three, three days, days, three days. So, yes, uh, hopefully we can have, uh, you know, more conversation about that, you know, when the warning strike is over, if stakeholders have called you to the negotiating table and if there's any progress regarding uh, the working condition of telecommunication workers in Nigeria. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anytime, we'll always make ourselves available. Thank you so okay. much for having us. You're welcome. Have a great day. You All too. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdullahi. This is where we draw the curtains here on The Breakfast, talking about, you know, what workers are allegedly going through in the hands of telecommunications operators. And we know this, you know, when you get cheap labor, we'll talk about this even with the NYC. You know, many companies that we know, you know, they simply rely on getting a, a you know, a pool of youth, of youth core members. They don't even hire staff staff anymore. They just use youth core members year in, year out, and they're able to make money for themselves and exploit that. So, yes, these issues exist, and um, and our labor laws need to be put in place because I, I think it's unfortunate that you have a situation where uh, you, you're having a verdict on matters, and then the, 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 the uh, plaintiff, you know, choose to, to refuse to obey those. So that's... Uh, that really doesn't sound right for no, a country. Um, hopefully, we get to hear from uh, the Minister of Labor or from you know any of these telcos uh, to hear their own side um, and understand you know why they you know according to him have refused to comply with the um, directives from the Ministry of Labor. Um, you know, it's also great to know you know how far you know uh, this uh, well, how much you know this has um, affected uh, workers across the country and. Um, yes, you know, every now and then you hear someone say, well, I'm a contract staff with this telco or the other. You know, you're only working for two months or for three months. You don't get any of your allowances. You don't get any Even of in the banks. Any... It happens in the yeah, banks as well. You know, absolutely. And so um, there, is, there is definitely a problem, you know, a fundamental problem with our labor laws, a problem with our recruitment processes. And, um, you know, the fact that a lot of companies take advantage of the level of unemployment in yes. Nigeria and people who are willing to do whatever it takes to at least be employed for a while. Um, they take advantage of that, and um, you know, it's, you know, of course, people b b become victims of uh, these uh, issues. So, um, we will hope that we can expand the conversation and bring in the, the Minister of Labour and, of course, uh, you know, representative uh, from these telecommunication uh, um, um, companies uh, here in Nigeria. But thanks to Okonu Abdullah, he is the General Secretary of the um, organization, mm -hmm. uh, Tessan, uh, who, of course, uh, have declared the three-day warning strike. I'm not sure how the strike affects. Uh, the companies and affects um, uh, cons uh, customers? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe if they're saying that customer service operatives are not working, maybe you might have a challenge with your phone line, you call the customer care line and no one's picking up. So oh. that really is going to have a lot of effect on the tel telcos. But that's what it is at the moment. We also spoke about grazing routes in Nigeria and the opposition to it by uh, southern governors and other groups in the country. Do catch up with us on all social media platforms. It, it's at Plus TV Africa. If you missed out on any part of our conversation, uh, my name is Aneta Felix saying have a great day. And I am Osao Gye